Taylor Wallace sitting here in my kitchen once again. This is the first 2021 KUTX at home session I've gotten to do, and I'm thrilled that it's with one of my favorite new ish. They've been around for a while, but new to our KUTX listenership. The album Super Monster came out recently, and we have been playing it like crazy on the airwaves. I'm joined today by New York's Claude. Claude, hello and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's it's interesting to know where to start. So this Super Monster is your quote unquote debut album. You had Sideline Star that came out back in 2019. And so let's go back a little bit because there was a lot of momentum behind that. You, um, and just to uh, give some context, you were born and raised suburbs of Chicago, went to eventually moved to Syracuse and you call New York home now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you had the duo Toast. Yes. Great name. Thank Great you. name. And a name where new band names are scarce. <laughs> I have to say, I really like that one. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, then you were able to kind of take on Claude as your own project mm -hmm. uh, and put out Sideline Star back in 2019. And there was a lot of momentum. I mean, you played Ruck Trade. You were interviewed on Paste Magazines. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what was, can you talk more to like that momentum from that and the attention that you were able to grab? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I put out an EP um, about a year and a half ago now. Um, and it, I think like the song Wish You Were Gay really touched a lot of people. And um, I was touring a lot. I was opening for a lot of bands and then right before the pandemic, did my own headlining tour um, that was just like five cities um, and some smaller shows and it was really fun <laughs> and um, yeah and then the pandemic hit uh, and eventually I finished my album that I had been working on before the pandemic during it and and I just put it out last month or yeah two months ago now and that the album was the first put out on Phoebe Bridgers's new label, uh, Saddest Factory, which saddest factory, but you know, you know, I, I get, I love the joke when you say it's satisfactory. Um, mm -hmm. I love to hear the, the origin story about, I mean, Phoebe Bridgers is such a huge deal and to be one of the first people she approaches to be on her personal label, please speak to that. <laughs> um yeah it was a really like wild moment I think um I, I'm still like not sure I don't really remember how she heard my music for the first time but she heard it I think a few different people had shown it to her um just naturally came across it and um she reached out to me and was like because I had not I didn't know her before and she was sort of just like hey like I really like your music. I'm starting a record label. Um, let's talk about it. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, let's talk about it. And I had been a big fan of hers. Like I used to play her on my like college radio show all the time and um, was just like a really big fan. And so of course was like, yeah, I'll like sit down with you and talk about your record label that you want to start. <laughs> and How I many hours can I have? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let's talk about this a lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Mo, we actually did talk about it so much because, and it took a while to like really get like the full picture of what her vision was and what my vision was for my album. And finally we just like really aligned and, and it worked out. Well, and I know you, you've spoken before about having apprehension about signing with any label because historically a lot of labels, um, also like you, like you've said in, in, um, but previously that they're not, it's not musicians for musicians. It's mm -hmm. business people for musicians. Yeah. So I can imagine that someone coming from the up and underground who wants to start a label must have been very comforting. Yeah, it was, especially because the label is a part of Secretly Group, which is already like an independent label. Um, and they just unionized, which is really sick. The, secretly Hell yeah. um so they're very very like 
very independent minded, which was also was like a huge draw for me. And then, um, and then on top of it, like Phoebe, as an artist has completely different perspective on the music industry than music business like dudes do, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so I was just like really drawn to her perspective and felt like much more um, heard and understood um, by her and her team than than most of the other. And so, yeah, that really was like what was reassuring for me because I wasn't really sure if I was going to try and sign anywhere for my album. It was, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's when it comes to a lot of contracts and things like that, or any sort of signing with anyone, you feel like you're signing a piece of you away. And of course, contracts are written to be confusing to somebody. Like you have to have a law degree to understand mm-hmm. the, where, where these are coming from. My husband's going to law school starting in August as a musician to represent musicians for this reason. Uh-huh. So I told, I am, I totally empathize, empathize with, with that. Um, well, that's, so it must feel fantastic to know that like you didn't want to sign with a label and then you get to sign on with like an artist you really like for their label going to so uh and knowing that you feel protected and so how has the sit how post releasing your album have you felt like all of that's been lived up to yeah it's been really fun it's been like, yeah, it's actually been really fun. Like, it's cool because I've had so many ideas of what I wanted to do creatively for so long. And and Phoebe has so many like fun ideas and like resources. Like, like we had this like brainstorming session for like the soft spot music video. And she had like really briefly brought up, she was like, I think we should make like a doll out of the monster you drew for your cover art. And I was like, okay yeah that'd be cool and then it was never brought up again and like two days later the doll just like showed up to my apartment I was like hi like it just like showed up you know she just like had a friend who made dolls and just like made the doll you know like and I that's that was like a really good example of like she just like has ideas and like knows how to like get them done you know and it's it's really fun and it feels like the possibilities are like endless that's great. I love that music video. I mean, it's but even though it's mostly just like you hanging out in the back of like a moving truck, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know. There's something still really, really powerful about this, and the, and I think a lot of that speaks to the song itself. I know the album is a lot about different kinds of relationships that you've experienced, whether they're platonic or unrequited or just you know, I wish they could, I wish it could have been, or it was, and now it wasn't, and all of, just all of this mix of relationships, and I think that's really interesting for it to not it's not just romantic it's it's just relationships lowercase r as as is has it been was that album really cathartic to write and to put out to the world stressful to put out (laughs) um you know it's always hard like putting yourself out there oh yeah um and letting people hear vulnerable parts of you but yeah it was very cathartic and I think the best part was being able to reflect on where I was at like I have literal documentation of so many moments in my life just from writing songs about it you know and being able to reflect on those moments and grow from them are like really special um yeah so that that was definitely I already feel like I've grown so much in just like the amount of time I've written the record you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's really cool. Have you already started? I mean, I heard you say before that you sometimes go through spurts where you write a song a day. So do you already have like a bunch of material that you're sitting on to propel into the next project? I mean, I always have songs and I'm always writing something, but I've been so, my head has just been so into super monster, like so deep, like the world of super monster I did all the artwork so I've been drawing a lot of different like posters and assets that I'm going to need here and there and just like figuring out the way uh, like every day I have to figure out a different way to like present this album to people based on how they are asking me to present it you know okay. um, and I just don't feel ready yet to turn my back on it yet like I feel like there's so much more to be done to like 
show people these this world you're still you're very present in the moment yeah that's great so um I was actually trying to trying to figure out the about the artwork because I really like the artwork and so you and did you animate the music video for guard down uh no I don't know how to animate um so I basically sent this uh animator Jeremy Higgins like so many different drawings and illustrations based off of the artwork that I did for the for the album and he like or, and I also wrote like the whole music video I was like this is what's gonna happen like I had this like seven page long google doc of like the breakdown and how it was gonna happen and all this stuff and then he he did it yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. And um, well, speaking of music videos, your music video for Gold that I was um, gushing on you before we started recording, <laughs> um, I've watched it. I've watched it a few times, and it came out back in October. And I'm curious about before we get into the meat of it, um, a music video that came out in October, obviously with like a very stripped down cast of people in mm -hmm. it. Um, what was the process for you specifically? and the people involved in the project recording and getting that out dur during COVID? It was really hard. Um, everybody who's in the music video was my, was like a good friend of mine. So we had either, either they were living with me or like we had seen each other, like we were in like a pod when, or I knew they were being really careful. Um, the director was Christina Shang, who's done like most of my music videos um we met in high school um and i'm really close with her as well and so i think it was one of those things we were where everybody was like really scared because none of us had really been on a music video set um since the start of the pandemic but we rented this like it basically was like a rec room i'm not really sure how you would describe it but it was like this like big open space and with like windows on all sides and we opened all the windows and all the doors <laughs> and we were just like had like fans and like air purifiers going the whole time and everybody wore masks and um we were just like okay I guess we're gonna try and do this you know like um but yeah that it was like it was really funny and and chaotic but it was fun and safe and nobody got sick and it was good and to set the scene for those listening who haven't seen it yet, um, when we post this, we'll definitely be sure to uh, include the music video, but it's, you've got this like cast of characters at this very like, I say low budget with a lot of, uh, with a lot of respect and a lot of love, but it's like low budget cotillion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they've got you as kind of like the monster version of Claude. And then you've yeah. got and then every, everyone else, you know, I love the whole like, hello, my name is bat, uh, <laughs> stickers that have witch, yeah. tooth fairy, um, sideline star, which I recognize as a nod to your first album. Yeah. Uh, and tooth fairy and all by, you know, being, uh, being, cotillioned by madame and then so it's going through this very like <laughs> just a yeah. bunch of people who don't want to be there and then at the end you just tear shit up you just tear it all up and strip it down it and was essentially like um an etiquette class yeah so it was like training these monsters who are not or these creatures who are not meant to assimilate with nor like with society with societies we know it or mainstream cultures we know it like you can't really make a a monstrous like Frankenstein assimilate with you know <laughs> the majority of the world <laughs> um right. so it was like uh yeah so that was sort of like the point of the video um and um yeah, it, it was it was really fun to make. Yeah, we had like the sideline star from like the EP from last year. And um, yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I and it was cool. because I mean, I read it as like a, a metaphor for in general, like, you know, not being able to like, like it's 2021. There is no sort of like gender role or whatever gender really can, you know, can confirmation or even if you do identify as what, whatever or no gender like that doesn't mean that you're expected to act behave or live up to any sort of expectation and it was just like especially at the end of it like this cathartic like ripping down of all of this and complete rejection of all of it and I was like mm. this, this is gold 
<laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, the the part at the end where we tear down all the posters and tear up the streamers and I smash the cake. That was really fun. Yes, cake smashing. I don't know. There's something about putting your fist in some like soft food that's just like I'm just we had to do it so many times. Oh god, how many cakes did y'all have? We only had one, which was the weird part. So I would like punch I the first time I like punched the cake, but I like did it wrong or something. Or the camera did like I don't know, something was wrong. They're like, okay, you're gonna punch the cake again, but you have to angle it this way so it looks like you didn't punch it yet. And I was like, okay. And we did that like three or four times. And by the time I was just like punching the paper, like on the, or the cardboard <laughs> on the other side of the cake, I was just like punching the plate. Like, <laughs> so I know from your first EP, uh, wish you were gay means a whole lot to you. And is very, and is very special and is a very special song for you. Is there a comparative song on super monster? Not necessarily in theme, but in sentiment. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, there's a couple songs on Super Monster that are are really important to me. I think um, I think I've, Anna is a really important one to me. Um, it started off as character writing, like this song is going to be about a man who has to leave the woman he loves to go find himself because he loves her so much and she, he thinks she deserves the best and he doesn't feel like he's giving her the best. So he has to leave her to, to be able to do that. Um, and I was like, yeah, pff, couldn't be me. I don't know. I've never been a 40 year old man who has to go find himself. But then I was like, we do that a lot, you know, and, and like, I, I, I think it's more about the idea that like, self-care is like the least selfish thing you can do and like taking care of yourself is actually really more for other people so that you are the best person you could be you know I um, absolutely know what you're saying yeah so I think that's more about what that song is about and I I'm, I really I still a lot of the songs I'm like so sick of hearing but that one's still like resonates with me <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a, that's very honest <laughs> I wonder sometimes how many of like bands who've been around like how like when did Weezer get sick of hearing Buddy Holly you know <laughs> probably right away <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting here with New York's Claude we're talking about the out the new album Super Monster that's out on Phoebe Bridger's uh label Saddest Factory and we talked about this a little bit before but and it's interesting um like I was saying this is the first uh, session that I've gotten to do in 2021. And I'm really, really excited it's been with you, but the ones in 2020 have all kind of been like setting the stage for what COVID's been like. But now that we're kind of, I wouldn't say on the other side of it yet, we kind of need to main, stay the course to be sure we're on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. But instead of saying like, what has it been like in lockdown? It's, we can ask a different question. And it's like, what is the, uh, the vaccination scene like in New York? <laughs> it's good. It's like, well, I mean, I it's better than most places I've seen it. I think um, it's much more accessible. There's like uh, starting next week, anybody over the age of 16 is going to be eligible, which is really great. Um, and yeah, so it feels like it, it feels positive. Um, uh yeah have you been able to get vaccinated yet yes I got my first shot nice um, and so I'm getting the next one soon but yeah yeah here in uh I can't speak for the rest of Texas but in Austin where we're coming from um the 16 went into effect this last week oh nice on the 29th and I'm 30 and I was able to get I just got my second shot on Wednesday oh okay cool yeah Very so cool. You know, looking forward to getting back to my favorite hobby of licking doorknobs and bars, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to that. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. I, in, in uh, doing my pre-research, and I, I tipped you off to this before, but we 
I can't let you go without talking about Smashing Pumpkins. So I need to know about your inception into Smashing Pumpkins. And I need to hear all about the cover band. And then I just want to hear, I want to know all about your favorite albums, songs, and thoughts. Okay. So Smashing Pumpkins, when I was like 15, basically the, the town I grew up in, um, Billy Corgan has a tea shop and like lives in the town that I grew up in which is like so random, but I always listened to Smashing Pumpkins in high school because he was, he was always around, you know, Uh, and yeah, and uh, in high, and I pretty much a lot of people I played music with in high school, like everybody loved the Smashing Pumpkins, Um, and because they're from Chicago, they're Chicago royalty, yeah, so we, uh, we started a cover band, we played one show, um, at a bowling alley and invited the Smashing Pumpkins to the show. They, they could not come. I also don't think they ever got the invitation, but yeah, we played at a bowling alley to like our parents. That was it. Well, and in the interest of your time, can you give me three of your favorite Smashing Pumpkin songs? Okay. Well, Melancholy is like my favorite record. So I'd probably say 1979 obviously I, I i like the hits i'm not even gonna lie to you i like the hits i really like tonight tonight and they're great hits i really like i mean space boy maybe <gasps> that's my one of my favorites too oh, like boy. oh absolutely i, I I love melancholy, but I'm a sucker for Siamese Dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Space Boy is a pretty good song. That is an incredible, I mean, especially as like slower songs go, mm-hmm. I am a huge, huge fan. Cool. And I know that your time is limited. Claude, thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking. Yeah, thank you. This afternoon, this has been a ton of fun. Yeah, thanks for uh, talking with me. <laughs> the new album, Sp- uh, Super Monster, is out now. You can find it wherever. It's out on Phoebe Bridger's label, Satisfactory. And Claude, thank you so much for joining us. And you're listening to KUTX 98.9.